Hi everyone, in this set of videos, we'll saw the actual questions which came in the year of CAC 2020 specific to slot 1. We'll cover all the possible slots. Let's take question by question. In this set of videos, we'll solve the questions which came in the topic of math or quantitative aptitude. At the same time, students who are looking forward for joining the CAC coaching uh, for their respective years in which, uh, whether you're looking for this year or next year, can look at the important notification and the website details of MBAP Education main website where all the course which has been listed there will be curated and will be taken by top IM mentors and faculties who have studied and given CAT with more than 99% of the score. And obviously, if you look at our student dashboard, there are plethora and plenty of content which is specific to your CAT as well as non-CAT examination. And you will get complete access for the given year whichever you, in, which, in which you will be appearing for the given exam of CAT and the non-CAT. On this note, let's quickly start with the discussion of the questions which came in the year of 2020 slot 1. Let's have a look at the very first question uh, which came in this year. The question was, read the question well. How many three digit numbers are there for which the product of the digit is more than 2 and less than 7? I repeat, the question says it's a three digit number and you can assume any of the given number. Let's assume it to be as A, B and C. But they are saying the product of A into B into C has to be less than 7 and has to be more than so three digit number A, B and C on multiplication should be more than two and less than seven. So more than two and less than seven, how many such numbers are basically possible even, even if you consider the possibility could be either the product could be three or it could be four or it could be five or it could be six. These are four possibilities on which I can understand the numbers of the product of these values could be up to. And there are so many possible cases that we can have to consider to make sure which, how many such overall numbers are possible. Let's start with the first case, which is 3. Now the question says A into B into C should be equal to 3. In how many ways can we take 3 numbers in which the product will be equal to 3? The only possible way is you multiply 3, 1 and 1. I repeat, you multiply 3, 1 and 1 um, and you'll get the product as 3. Now the place value of 3, 1 and 1 keep on changing. One number could be 3, 1, 1. Second number could be 1, 3, 1. And the last number could be 1, 1, 3. There are 3 spaces units, tens and hundred digit places and one, one, three have to be accommodated. In how many ways can you do it? It's basically three factorial divided by two because one has come as a repetition for two or two times. So number of possible cases here would be how much? Would basically be three. Similarly, now you can look for the other numbers. Let's take for four. You want A into B into C to be equal to four. How many ways can you do it? One of the ways two into two into one or 2 to 1 with various permutation combination in how many ways can you accommodate 2 to 1 at 3 places just like 3 1 1 2 2 is a repetition here so the number of possible cases here would also be 3 2 to 1 1 to 1 1 1 2 there's also a case which is 4 into 1 into 1 I repeat there could also be a case which is 4 into 1 into 1 here 1 and 1 will be repeated so 4 1 1 1 4 1 1 1 4 could be 3 more cases which is possible moving ahead let's take a number 5 now you want A into B into C to be equivalent to 5. The only way possible is 5 into 1 into 1 or 5 1 1. 5 1 1, 1 5 1, 1 1 5. There will be 3 such cases possible. And lastly, let's look at the number 6. To make the number look like A into B into C to be equivalent to 6, one of the possible ways is taking 2, 3 and 1. Now 2, 3 and 1 are 3 distinct places and 3 distinct numbers. In how many ways can you accommodate 2, 3, 1? In three different places, how many such numbers are possible? It's three factorial, three into two into one. So there would be six possible solutions here. Is there any other way in which you can get six? There's one more way in which you can get six, which is basically six into one into one. Six one one, one six one, one one six. Again, three more cases are possible. So let's look at the total number of cases which is possible. We have taken into consideration all the cases. Three plus six plus three plus three plus three plus three. Total number of cases which is possible will basically be 21 such cases. Hence, the final answer for this question will basically be 21. And that's how you very beautifully have solved the first question. Considering all the possible cases, the total number of numbers which is possible would be simply 21. I hope all of you have understood this. Let's have a look at the next question. Read the question well. The question says, if f of 5 plus x is equal to f of 5 minus x, for every real x and f of x to be equal to 0, 
has four distinct real roots. Then find the sum of the roots, sum of all the possible roots. There are four real roots, and you have to find the sum of all the possible four roots. Okay. What is given to you? What is given to you is f of phi plus x or x plus phi is basically equal to f of phi minus x. Okay. If I assume, let's assume my x is basically, or if I'm replacing x as x minus phi, let's see how the function will change. If I'm replacing x as x minus phi, then f of x plus phi will simply become f of x. And f of phi minus x will simply become f of 10 minus x. Okay. Now I understood and I got that f of x will be equal to f of 10 minus x. And if I also assume that let's take a and b are basically my roots of the equation. If a and b are basically the roots of the function, let of, let's say f of x to be equal to 0. Then in that case, 10 minus a and 10 minus b will also be the roots of f of x to be equal to 0. Okay. So how many roots will I find? I am able to find a, b, 10 minus a and 10 minus b. And if I'm able to find the sum of all the possible roots, if I add them, it becomes a plus b plus 10 minus a plus 10 minus b. So you'll say a, b, a, b will get cancelled. And the sum of all the possible roots will simply be equal to 20. Easy question. I'm sure all of you have done it well and have understood also how to tackle this question in the actual CAT exam also. Let's have a look at the next question. It's slightly easy question on SI and CI. The question says, Viru invested rupees 10,000 at 5 percent each simple interest and exactly after 2 years, Joy invested 8,000 at 10 percent each simple interest and with interest. How many years after Viru's investment will the balances, which is principal plus interest, uh, will be actually equal? So on one side you have got Viru and the second side you have got Joy. Okay. Now let's say Viru invested rupees 10,000. Viru invested basically how much? 10,000. This is my principal. And you obviously will get some interest also. My interest will basically be 10,000 into number of years, let's and into the rate of interest. My rate of interest is basically 5. And let's assume for the first year, what is the interest what they will get? This is how the value will look like for, for Viru. Let's look for Jay. Jay is investing after two years and it is he is investing 8,000. So my principal is 8,000 and my interest will be equal to how much? My interest will be equal to 8,000. Uh, here I'm getting 10 percentage. So 10 into 1 divided by 100. This is how the figures will look like for J and for V2. Now for one year, let's consider in this case, let's say this is my year 0 and J or Joy came after the second year. For the first year, the interest which will be, uh, will be accumulated for V2's discussion will be 5 percentage of 10,000. 10 percentage is 1,000, 5 percentage will be 500. For one year, it is 500. So for two years, it's basically 1,000. Adding 1,000 more, I repeat, adding 1,000 more to my principal amount, my principal amount will actually become 11,000. Okay. So by the time, let's consider in this way, by the time Jay or Joy has started investing, Viru already has accumulated my principal amount to be as 11,000. So this is basically 11,000 plus the same principal, interest 10K into 5 into 1 divided by 100. Okay. And uh, Joy is still on the same. Okay. Now every year, let's consider in this way. Every year, Viru is getting 500 rupees as the interest. And Joy is getting 800 rupees as the interest. So how much more Joy is making every year from Viru? He is making 300 rupees of a difference. And what is the actual difference that he has to conquer? The difference will be from 11,000 to 8,000. Because this guy, Viru is already on 11,000. 11,000 minus 8,000 will come out to be as 3,000. So it's like you have to come or you have to make 3,000 overall. Every year you're getting 300 rupees. So obviously after 10 years, you will be coming to this level of making 3,000. So after 10 years, the value will be same. But if I look at the inception year, from the inception year, I had already discounted two years. So my final answer will basically be two years from the beginning and 10 years later, my total answer finally will basically be 12 years will be how much? This answer will basically be 12 years. I hope all of you have understood and solved the question well. Now let's take the next question which came on the topic of time, speed and distance. A wonderful question. Read the question. Well, the question says the train traveled at one third of its usual speed and hence reached the destination 30 minutes after the scheduled time. 
On its return journey, the train initially traveled at its usual speed for 5 minutes, then stopped for 4 minutes for an emergency. The percentage by which the train must now increase its usual speed so as to reach the destination at the scheduled time. So the first thing which I want to understand in this question is, what is the standard time of reaching to my destination? We all know the whole question or let's say our uh, concept of time speed and distance will be based on one proportionality for speed and time which basically is inverse proportionality which says if speed goes down time will basically go all of us notice it has been said a train now is traveling at one third of its usual speed a train is moving at one third of its usual speed so the decrement in speed will basically be two third if speed is going down by two third to one by x if speed is going down by one by x time will go up by one by x minus one so this will be two minus two divided by three minus one which will be two x so I'll take two times the actual time and if I take twice the actual time, I'm reaching 30 minutes after the scheduled time. So 2x is 30. So my actual time will basically be 15 minutes. I repeat, my actual time is basically only 15 minutes. So the journey is basically only and only for 15 minutes, right? Now while it's return journey, for the first five minutes, everything was normal. And then the train actually got halted. So the distance covered is only this much. But now the time will basically will be nine minutes, four minutes more you have to wait. And now my overall journey is basically accounting for how much time? My overall journey is basically accounting only and only for 15 minutes of the overall time. Now, if I divide five minutes, five minutes and five minutes, basically I should cover one third in each of the interval. One third in each of the interval. In first five minutes, I covered one third. But even after nine minutes, I covered a distance of one third only. Right? So which means in the remaining six minutes, I should be able to cover two third of the overall distance. Okay. To cover the actual distance of two third, I should ideally take five plus five, 10 minutes. I should actually take, now this is the ideal situation. In 10 minutes, I should be able to do cover two third of the distance. But instead of 10 minutes, I've got only six minutes, which is left. Only six minutes, which is left. Now let's see the time is going. So 10, the distance, which has to be covered in 10 minutes now have to be covered in only in only 6 minutes. So again, let's consider the same functionality or proportionality. Time is inversely proportional with speed. Now time is going down. You have, you have less time. From 10, the time is now converted to 6 minutes. So 4 upon 10. So 2 upon 5 is the fraction by which time is going down. If time is going down by 2 by 5, then speed will go up by 2 divided by 5 minus 2, which is 2 thirds. So I'm taking two third of the time more. Two third is basically 66.66 percentage. .66%. The closest answer that you can mark will basically be 67 percentage. I hope you have understood this. It's a wonderful story. If you narrate yourself well, very well, you'll be able to crack these questions easily. Let's take the next question, which came on the topic of logs. It says log five to the base four is equal to log y to the base four into log root five to the base six. And the question is about find the value of y. Okay. Um, so possibly let me rewrite the whole question. This basically is log of 5 to base 4 is equal to log of y to base 4 multiplied by log of root 5 to base 6. Okay. Let's take log of root 5 to base 6 on the right left hand side. So this will become log of 5 to the base 4 divided by log of root 5 to the base 6 will be equal to log of y to base 4. Okay. Now this is log of root 5. Root 5 will basically be 5 raised to 1 by 2. So 1 by 2 will basically will go out. So the whole expression will look like 1 by 2 times and this root of 5 will simply becomes will simply become only 5. Will simply become only 5. Now suddenly if I rewrite the whole expression, 2 will go out. So this will become 2 times log of 5 to the root 4 multiplied by, let's reciprocate this. So this will become log of 6 to the base 4. Log of 6 to the base 5, my bad, will be equal to log of y to the base 4. Let me rewrite 5 well. So let's take this out and let's me rewrite this to be as 5. Okay. Now let's, this is two times log 5 by log 4 into log 6 by log 5. Log 5, log 5 will get cancelled. 
So this will become two times log of six to the base four, which is log six by log four, because five five will get cancelled. Will be equal to log of y to the base four. Now log to the base four, log to the base four is basically common. So two can be taken out here. This will look like log of six square thirty six, which is six square, will be equal to log to the base four log to the base 4, log to the base 4 will be common and to, can be eliminated. So my final value of y will simply come out to be as 36. And hence the final answer for this question will simply turn out to be a value which is numerical 36. Let's have a look at the next question. The question says, read the question well. The question says, the number of real valued solution for the equation 2 raised to x plus 2 raised to minus x is equal to 2 minus x minus 2 the whole square. Let me rewrite this first. This is 2 raised to x plus 2 raised to minus x will be equal to 2 minus x minus 2 the whole square. Clear? Now this is 2 raised to x plus 2 raised to minus x which is 1 upon 2 raised to x. This looks like an expression of y plus 1 upon y. ix plus 1 upon x. We know the minimum value of this expression will be what? Will be 2 and beyond. Will be the minimum value possible will be when y and y will be equivalent to 1. Right? So let's take the LHS. My LHS is a value which is more than or equivalent to 2. My RHS, if I come to x minus 2 the whole square, will definitely be a value which is more than or equal to 0. But this is 2 minus a value which is non-negative. 2 minus 0, 1, whatever it could be. This will definitely be a value which is less than or equivalent to 2. This whole expression. So my LHS, the maximum value, the minimum value which I can take will be 2. And here, the minimum value which I can assume, uh, maximum value which I can assume on the RHS will basically be equivalent to 2. If I have to equate both the expression, the only possible solution which I can conclude will basically be when both the sides will be 2. If I have to make both the expression to be equal to 2, then in that case, x should certainly be assumed to be as 0. Now, if I put x to be 0, then it's going to become what? It's going to become 2 raised to 0 plus 2 raised to minus 0 will be equal to 2 raised to minus 2 minus 0 minus 2 the whole square. This is 1 plus 1 which is plus 2 and this is 2 minus this is 2 square is 4. Now 2 minus 4 is equal to minus 2. We understand minus 2 is not equal to plus 2. So even in this case I understood the equa expressions are not matching even if I have to put x to be equal to 0. So hence the answer for this question has to be number of real valued solution will indefinitely become will definitely become to be as zero. There is no possibility where the expression will have any real group. Now let's take the next question on time, speed and distance. The question said a straight road connects from point A to B. Car 1 travels from A to B and B2 travels from B to A which are moving in the opposite direction. Both have left at the same time. After meeting each other, they take 45 minutes and 20 minutes respectively to complete their journey. So once they meet, they take their respective time, not the total time. If car 1 is moving at a speed of 60 kmph, the question is find the speed of car 2. Now all the questions of time three distance you got to visualize so that you are able to solve it well. Let's say this is my point A to B. I've got car 1 here and I've got car 2 here. They are moving in the opposite direction. And let's assume this is my meeting point. The question said, car 1 is moving at a speed of 60 kmph. And after the meeting point, he is taking 45 minutes to come till B. And car B, the speed is not known to be. After the meeting point M, car 2 is taking 20 minutes to come till A. That's the only point which is known to be. And the question is, find the speed of car 2. This is the value of x that I have to find out. Now M is my meeting point. Let's assume car A and car B have respectively taken T minutes to travel to come to this meeting point. T is my time taken for A to come till M. T is the time taken by B to come till M from B. Clear? We also know till this meeting point AM to MB. From AM to MB, the ratio of speed of both the cars will remain the same, same right? The ratio of speed of car 1 to car 2 in from A to M is as same as the ratio of speed of car 2 to car M from M to B. 
if I use that, I also know speed is inversely proportional to time. So if I use that, possibly you can understand, let's take the speed to be in the ratio of A to M as 3 to 20, should be as same as the reciprocal of 45 by T, 45 by T. In this case, T square will simply become 45 to 20, which should be 900. If T square has been given to you as 900, T will be basically given to you as 30. Which means the time taken here will basically be 30 minutes. The time taken here will also be 30 minutes. The question is about find the speed of car 2. I know the time traveled by car 2 from B to M is 30 minutes. I need to know the distance. See the distance you'll be able to find out by car 1. Car 1 from M to B traveled for 45 minutes which is 3 fourth of an hour at 3 fourth of an hour and it was moving at a speed of 60 kmph. So if I solve this, I understand this is my 45 km of the distance. Now let's see for car 2 from M to B, the distance covered is basically 45 km and the time taken is half an hour. So my original speed of car 2 will basically be 90 km per hour. Easy question, all of you should get the answer right. The only thing that you need to consider is the ratio of speed of car 1 to car 2 from A to M will be as same as the ratio of speed of car 1 to car 2 from M to B. And speed is inversely proportional to time. If you use this, very easily you will be able to solve this question which came in the year of 2020 of CAT. Now let's have a look at this simple arithmetic question which came in the year of CAT 2020. Read the question well. I'm sure all of you would be able to solve it very nicely also. It says, let A, B and C be three positive integers such that the sum of A and the mean of B and C is 5. Which means basically A plus mean of B plus C should be equal to 5. And also they are saying um, the sum of B plus the mean of A plus C is basically given to you as 7. Which simply means 2A plus B plus C should be equal to 10 and 2B plus A plus C should be equal to 14. If you solve this, you'll understand that B is equal to nothing but A plus 4. This is equation 1 and this is equation 2. If I have understood B is equal to A plus 4, let's try to put it in equation number 1. So this will become 2A plus A plus 4 plus C will be equal to 10. Which is 3A plus C should be equal to 6. Now it has been said A, B and C, all of them are positive integers. They are non, non-negative, even in the hour. So all of them have to be positive, which is 1 and beyond. If I assume A to be as 2, then 3 2 are will be 6 and C will become 0. This combination I cannot assume. So the only way in which you can solve this question will basically be 3 into 1 will be 3 plus 3 will be equal to 6. Which means A is given to you as 1 and C has been given to you as 3. Now the question is about find the sum of a plus b, right? The question is about find the sum of a plus b. Let's try to put here and let's see the value of b. 2 times 1 will become 2. This will become 3. 2 plus 3 will become 5. So b should also be 5. So b should also be equal to 5. Now the question is about find the sum of a plus b. a plus b is simply nothing but 5 plus 1 which should be equal to 6. That's my answer. Option number Easy question, I am sure all of you have sorted within the given exam also. Let's have a look at the next question. Read the question well. The question says, if x is equal to 4096 raised to 7 plus 403, then the question is find the value of which is equal to 64. The relation between 4096 and 64 is basically 64 square. So the question says, x is nothing but 64 square raised to 7 plus 4 root 3, right? x squared is 64 square raised to 7 plus 4 root 3. So possibly if I take the root of this, then root of x will look like 64 raised to 7 plus 4 root 3, right? I want everything to be in the form of 64. So 64 will be equal to what? 64 will be equal to root of x raised to 1 divided by reciprocal will come up 1 plus 7 plus 4 root 3. This is what the answer will be. But it's not given in this form. So possibly you would have to solve the value of x raised to 1 by 2 
to 1 by 7 plus 4 root 3. Let's first solve 1 by 7 plus 4 root 3. Taking the conjugate pair, this will become 7 minus 4 root 3. Here also it's going to become 7 minus 4 root 3. So this will become, the, the numerator will become 7 minus 4 root 3 divided by 7 square which is 49 minus 16 into 3 which is 48. So 64 is given to you as root of x raised to 7 minus 4 root 3. Now this is nothing but 7x raised to 1 by 2. So this is going to become 7 by 2 minus 4 root 3 by 2 which will basically be x raised to 7 by 2 minus 2 root 3. This is what the value of x will be. So 64 basically will look like what? This will be x raised to 7 by 2 divided by x raised to 2 root 3. Let's see, do we have any option likewise? The ratio is x raised to 7 by 2 divided by x raised to 2 by 3. I see option number C alike. Hence, the answer for this question will become straight away option number C for this question. Let's have a look at the next question. The question says, find the mean of all the four digit even natural numbers that forms AABB. You have to find natural even numbers. So the last digit should be only in the form of digits like 0, 2, 4, 6, 8. And the last two digits is also same. So the possible last two digits could be 0, 0, 2, 2, 4, 4, 6, 6, and 8, 8. The first two numbers could be 1, 1, 0, 0, followed by 2, 2, 0, 0, 3, 3, 0, 0, will go till 9, 9, 0, 0. Next number, series of number will be 1, 1, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, till 9, 9, 2, 2. Third series of number, 1, 1, 4, 4, followed by 2, 2, 4, 4, till 9, 9, 4, 4. Next, 1, 1, 6, 6, 2, 2, 6, 6, till 9966. Six. Next, 1188, 2288 till 9988. Yeah. Now, all the numbers are 11. In, let's say this is row number 1, row number 2, row number 3 till 9th row. All the rows or all the numbers are 1100 and beyond, 2200 and beyond, 3300 and beyond, and 9900 and beyond. So, if I take this common out, which is 1100 plus 2200 plus 3300 till 9900. I am taking from all the rows. I am either you take it from column. If I take it from column, then there are five such columns. So this will go five times. So five times 1100 will come. Five times 2200 will come. Likewise, all the numbers will come up here. I hope all of you are clear with this. 1100, 2200 till 9900. I am taking these values common out. Clear? From all the, all the numbers which I can see here. So from each of the given column, I am taking it, the entire series of 11 till 99 out. And there are 5 such series. But still, there will be a huge set of values which is left. Apart from the first row, uh, column, this is out. From the other columns, it's 22 more, 44 more, 66 more, and 88 more. So let's take this also common now. 22 plus 44 plus 66 plus 88. Now 22 will come 9 times in column 2. This will 44 will come 9 times here. 66 will come 9 times and 88 will come 9 times. This is the set of numbers which I have got. And this is total of 45 such numbers which I can see here coming out. So basically we can take 1100 again common out here. The value will come out to be as 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 till 9. Plus again you take 9 into 22 common out. 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 will be the set of numbers which you have to solve. And my final expression will look like as simple as a value which we have got here. Now from here onwards all of you would be able to solve this question. The series of first 9 natural numbers which should be equal to 45. So this will be 45 into 1100 into 5. This is 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 which will basically be 10 into 20 into 9 divided by 45. If you solve this, the final answer will come out to be as 5544 which basically is option number 1. So you would have to solve in a very sequential linear manner so that you are able to get the answer right without making any mistake or error in this question. Hi everyone. Now let's have a look at the next question. This is question number 11 of CAG 2022 slot 1. 
the question says the number of distinct real roots of the equation x plus 1 by x the whole square minus 3 times x plus 1 by x plus 2 is equal to 0. Okay. Let's understand or let's assume this value of x plus 1 by x to be equal to y. If I do that, possibly the whole expression will become y square minus 3y plus 2 will be equal to 0. This is what we need to solve. Right. But we need to find the number of real roots for the original expression. Now let's take into consideration the value of y. What did we assume? We assume x plus 1 by x will be equal to y. Now we also understand the minimum value of 1 or let's say x plus 1 by x will be equal to 2. The minimum value that we can assume will happen when x and will be equal to 1. So the minimum value of y will be either more than or equal to 2 or the value of y will be less than or equal to minus 2. These are the probable values or the range of values what y can take. But if you solve this expression y square minus 3y plus 2 will be equal to 0. This is basically y minus 2 into y minus 1 to be equal to 0 which says y should be either equal to 2 or y is equal to plus 1. Now the value of plus 1 obviously will not exist in this given range of y that we have got. So the only possible value of y that we can get is y to be equal to 2. If I substitute it back we understand x plus 1 by x the only value possible will be equal to 2. And if this is the only possible value of x plus 1 by x we also understand the value of x on which you can get x plus 1 by x to be equal to 2 will be only and only plus 1, will be only and only plus 1, which also gives you a clear hint that the number of distinct real roots which is possible for this equation will only be 1 and the answer is also 1. Hence, a very clear solution for this question is only one real root will be possible for this expression. I hope all of you have understood it well. Let's have a look at the next easy question. This is easy question on profit and loss. I'm sure all of you will be able to do it well. The question says, a person spent rupees 50,000 to purchase a desktop computer and a laptop computer. He sold the desktop at 20% profit and the laptop at 10% loss. If overall he made 2% profit in the whole purchase, then the question is find the price of the desktop. Okay. So let's make a very simple linear equation. You're getting 20% profit on the desktop. Let's say the price of desktop is D and the price of laptop is L. So let's say 20% will be 0 0.2 L. Uh, plus at the same time you have also purchased the laptop. Now the price of laptop is how much? You got loss. So it is 0.1 L. You are getting 2% profit in all. So 2% of how much? 2% of 50,000 is what we have to calculate. Which gives you a hint that 0.2 D minus 0.2 L should ideally be equal to 1,000. Should ideally be equal to 1,000. At the same time it has also been told that the total price of desktop plus laptop is basically 50,000. So if you just solve this, uh, let's say this is removing the decimal, the value will look like 2 times D minus 1 L should be equal to 10,000 and D plus L should be equal to 50,000. If you solve this, L and L will get cancelled and 3 times desktop price is coming to be as 60,000. If 3 times desktop price is coming to be as 60,000, then the price of desktop is only equal to 20,000 is my final answer. Easy question. The answer for this question is basically only and only 20,000 in all. I hope all of you have understood it well. Let's have a look at this question. A wonderful question and very easy. I'm sure you'll be able to get it well also. The question says, among 100 students, X1 have birthdays in January, X2 have birthdays in February and so on. And if X0 is maximum of the value of X1, X2, X3 till X12, uh, then question is find the minimum possible value of x0. The question is not to maximum find the maximum value. The question you have to minimize. Okay. Now what is x1, x2? This is the range of set of numbers of 100 students who have got birthdays either in January, February, so and so forth. I can even assume, let's say all the 100 students have got the birthdays in January. So possibly it will like look like all the 100 students comes birthdays comes in January. February, March, April, all the other values will simply become 0, 0, 0. So even if I assume the minimum value of x0 here will basically be equal to 100. And you have to assume a lot of cases. Let's take a case, let's take x1, x2 to be equal to 50, 50. Okay. Let's take 50 students have their birthday in January, 50 students have their birthday in February. And rest March, April till December, all the other students will have 0, 0 birthdays 
uh, or zero number of students in the respective months. In this case, my x naught will become the minimum or let's say maximum value of the given wage, which is again equal to how much? Which is again equal to 50 only, right? Which is 50, 50, the maximum is again 50. The question is you have to minimize all of them. The only way to get minimum value is, let's say if you try to average out these 100 students in 12 months. If I average out these 100 students in 12 months, possibly let's take a case if all the 12 months have got 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8 students, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. Okay. If I give average of 8, 8, 8, 8, 8 to all the 12 months, it's still going to accommodate only 96 students, which means I'm still short of 4 other students. Now, if I have to accommodate four other students, I can easily accommodate one, 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 one in the last four months and whichever four months you want to take it out. So that the maximum of it all I have to find out will be either of the range of either finding maximum of eight and nine. I will not make it as 10, eight, 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 zero because the question is about to minimize. The minimum value is maximum of this given range. So this is the minimum possible range that I can consider. The maximum value that I get is basically of a number which is nine. So x naught will be the maximum of this given range, which is coming out to be as 9. And very beautifully, you've solved this question, that the answer for this given question will be 9. I hope you have understood the concept. The concept is to minimize the overall range and to find the maximum number of that given range. And very beautifully, you have answered the question to be as 9. Let's take a very beautiful question, which came on time, speed and distance. Read the question really, really well. The question says, two persons are walking beside a railway track at a respective speed of 2 and 4 km per hour in the same direction. A train came from behind them and crossed them in 90 seconds and 100 seconds respectively. The time in seconds taken by the train to cross its the electric post which is standard is nearest to what? Okay. So in relation to a guy who's working who's walking at 2 and 4 km per hour, I know the time he is taking, the train is taking. I need to understand the overall length of the train will be covered when the train covers the uh, let's say lamp post or the electric post so i need to understand or get to know the speed of the actual train what it is moving on let me assume that train is moving at a speed of t so this one case let's say this is the first guy who's moving at a speed of 2 kmph and the same uh, another guy who's working on the same uh, track who's moving at a speed of 4 kmph. The speed of the train is t, the speed of the train in instance 2 is also t, right? And uh, let's say the relative speed will be what? The relative speed of train versus the guy who's moving in the same direction will be t minus 2. And in the second instance will basically be t minus 4. So t minus 2, the distance is covered at in 90 seconds. And someone who is moving at a speed of t minus 4 is now is able to cover the same distance in basically 100 seconds, right? So at a speed of t minus 2 km per hour, I'm taking 90 seconds. At a speed of t minus 4 km per hour, I'm basically taking 100 seconds. We know the relation between speed and time. They are inversely proportional. So S1 by S2 will basically be equal to T2 by T1, which intends that t minus 2 divided by t minus 4 should ideally be equal to 100 upon 90. Right? Will basically be 100 upon 90. So you just have to solve this, which is t minus 2 into 90 should be equal to t minus 4 into 100. If you solve this, you will get the actual speed of train to be equivalent to 22 km per hour. Now, this is the speed of the train which I have. It has also been given to you that at a speed of t minus 2 km per hour, you are basically taking 90 seconds, which means at a speed of 20 kmph, the train will take 90 seconds across. But the original speed of the train is basically 22 kmph. And the question is how much time you will take, right? You cannot directly cross multiply because again, they are inversely proportional. S1 by S2 will be equal to T2 by T1, which gives you a sense that 20 upon 22 will be equal to X upon 90. So my final answer, will be 90 into 20 divided by 22. If you solve this, the nearest answer which you will get will basically be 
82 seconds that becomes my option number two i hope you are able to understand this just at the last stage do not directly cross my reply because they are inversely proportional otherwise this is not a very difficult question purely based on simple concepts which you know very well and i'm sure you will be able to solve and understand this question altogether wow let's look at the next question this is a very wonderful question because there would be a catch the question says how many distinct positive integers solutions exist for the expression x square minus 7x plus 11 raised to x square minus 3, 13x plus 42 equal to 11. So you need to find the roots of the base and also you need to find the roots of the exponential to find how many solutions actually would exist. Let's start with exponent. The exponent is x square minus 13x plus 42 is equal to 0. Which is nothing but how much? This is 7, 6 are 42. So x minus 7, x minus 6 will be equal to 0. So the number of possible solutions here will become 7, 6. Coming to the base, it is basically x squared minus 7x plus 11 will be equal to 1. So subtracting 11 minus 1, it's going to become x squared minus 7x plus 10 will be equal to 0, which basically is x minus 5, x minus 2 is equal to 0 and the value of x is coming out to be as 5 comma 2 is coming out to be as 5 comma 2 so possibly you understand two roots are coming out from here two roots are coming out from here so the solution possibly looks like 4 but there's a catch the catch is again resolve the space the catch is again try to resolve the space because we understand if this base x square minus 7x plus 11 becomes negative so minus 1 raised to any of the even number which is 7 comma 6 will again give you plus 1. So the next possible and the last possible solution will become x square minus 7x plus 11 is equal to minus 1. If you solve this it's going to become x square minus 7x plus 12 will be equal to 0. In this case it's going to become x minus 4 and x minus 3 to be equal to 0 and two more solutions are coming out to be as 3 comma 4. So 2 here, 2 here and 2 here. In all, six possible routes will be possible for this expression. So do not miss on the single instance. Obviously, you will come up with a lot of practice to get to understand which are the possible assumptions that you are missing upon to make sure none of the possible assumptions are been are not touched while solving these questions in the actual examination also. Let's have a look at this question. Wonderful question. You will be able to solve this question by separately. Let's see. A solid right at a circular cone of a height of 27 centimeter is cut in two pieces along with the plane parallel to the base at a height of 18 centimeter from the base. This, this is 18, so the above height of the smaller cone will basically be 9. If the difference in the volume of the two cones, or let's say two uh, pieces, this is the first one and this is the cone, is given to you as 225 cc. Then the question is find the volume of the original cone. Okay. Now, if you cut a cone into two pieces, obviously you get a smaller cone and you get a first term also. Okay. Let's compare the smaller cone, which is my SC, to a bigger cone. Bigger cone is my original cone. Okay. So this is 9, this is 28, this is 18. So the ratio is 1 is to 2. So let's assume my overall length of my cone is basically 3x, which is being divided into 1x and 2x. If you look at the height of a smaller cone versus a bigger cone, it will be in a ratio of 1 is to 3. 1x is a smaller cone and 3x is a full cone. So height is basically one dimensional and volume will basically be three dimensional. If one dimensional units is in the ratio of a is to b, then the two dimensional units which is the area will be in the ratio of a square and b square and the three dimensional which is volume will be in the ratio of a cube versus b cube. So the ratio of volume of a small cone versus a bigger cone will basically be 1 is to 27. This is the ratio of volume. So this is 27 volume of a bigger cone, which has to be divided into two parts. This is 1x. So this is 1x, the volume of a smaller cone. So the volume of the first term will basically be 1 minus 27, which is 26x. Now 26x is the volume of a first term. The volume of a smaller cone is coming out to be as 1x. And the difference of them is coming to be as 225 unit, which means 26 minus 1, 25x is coming out to be 225. So 1x is corresponding to 9cc. This is what we have found out. 
Now the question is about find the volume of the original cone, which is my bigger group. The volume of bigger cone is coming, uh, we assume it to be a 27x. The question is simple, if 1x is 9, 27x will become 27 into 9. Very simply, you have understood that the answer has to be option number C, which is 243cc to be the final answer. Clear? You need to understand the correlation between one dimensional height versus two dimensional area versus three dimensional uh, volume. A is to B versus A square B square versus A cube B cube. If you know this part of the function very easily, you'll be able to tackle all the possible questions. How much time does it take to solve a question like this? Possibly as a limit in the actual CAT exam scenario also. Okay, now let's look at the next question. Read the question well. The question says, a circle is inscribed in a rhombus with the diagonals 12 centimeter and 16 centimeter respectively. Uh, the two diagonals, D1, D2. The ratio of area of the circle to the area of rhombus has been asked. Okay, has been asked. So let's say this is my diagonal 1, which is the length of 12 to be divided from the center point 6 and 6. And this is my D2, which is again divided into two parts, such as 8 and 8, which is again 8 and 8. Obviously, since the diagonals will be perpendicular to each other, you will also understand that they will give you 90 degree here, which is 8, 6. If 8 and 6 are two sides of this triangle, let me term this as A, B and C. Then the third side obviously will become 10 because they are forming a triangle of uh, right angle 3, 4 and 5 will be uh, the uh, sides of the respective uh, this triangle which is 8, 6 and 10 will correspond to 3x, 4x and 5x. Okay. So the length BC will come out to be a 10. Rather all the sides will basically be 10, 10, 10, 10. Rather all the sides will basically be how much? All the sides will basically will become 10, 10, 10. You need to find a ratio of area of the circle to that of number. So first you need to find the area of the circle. To find the area of the circle, you also would need the radius of the circle first. The radius of the circle. This radius of the circle will also be the height of this triangle, which is A, B and C that we need to consider. So there are four triangles, which I can see, 490 degree triangle, let's say A, B, C and D. And all of them will have the same, all of them will basically will have the same uh, area. So if I look at this triangle, which has the sides as 8 and 6, over here, my overall area of this triangle will become half into 8 into 6, will become half into 8 into 6. On the other hand, let's take this triangle, which is which I can see at the bottom, where 10 becomes the base, the two sides will be 8 and 6 respectively. Here, my height is not known. Let's assume this is my height of H. Let's assume this is my height of H. This H will also be equivalent to the radius of this circle, which is inscribed in the rhombus, which is inscribed in the rhombus. Since both the area of this triangle will be equivalent, we understand this time half into 8 into 6 will be nothing but half into 10 into H, where 10 is the base of the new triangle, which we have considered. Half and half will get cancelled, this will become 48, will become 10H and the height of this triangle, which is also equivalent to radius of the circle, will be 24 upon 5, will be 24 upon 5. So what is the uh, area of the triangle? The area of a triangle is pi r squared, which is pi times 24 upon 5 into 24 upon 5. Now this is the ratio, of, we need to find the ratio of the circle to that of the rhombus. The area of rhombus will be given by half into d1 into d2, which is basically six, uh, uh, 8 plus 8 will become 16, into 6 plus 6 will become 12. This is the ratio of circle to that of rhombus that we have to find out. So basically, if you solve this, uh, the final answer will look like what? This 2 will go there, so it will become 48 into 24 upon 25 is to 16 upon 12. If you solve this, you will get the final, and this is pi in the beginning. My final answer will look like 6 pi upon 25 as the final ratio of the circle, area of the circle to that of the rhombus. If you see, is there any option which is matching to this? Yes, there is an option which is option number 2, which will be equal to it. And hence, my final answer will become 6 pi upon 25 as the final concluding answer for this question. Let's have a look at the next beautiful question on time, speed and distance. I think the question well. The question says, Leaving home at the same time, Amal reaches office at 10.15 a.m. if he walks at 10, 8 kmph. And if he walks at 15 kmph, he is reaching at 9.40. So obviously he is taking less time. Okay. He is roughly taking 35 minutes less. 
Leaving home at 10 a.m. At what speed does he should travel to reach office exactly at 10 a.m.? Now this is first you need to find a relation between what's happening in the first two instances. The first instance is Amal is leaving office at 10 15 a.m. Reaching office at 10 15 a.m. And this is going to happen if he is moving at a speed of 8 kmph. At the same time, if he moves at a speed of 15 kmph, then he is able to cover uh, the same distance in 35 minutes less. Uh, and he is able to reach the office at 9.40 a.m. At 9.40 a.m. Right? So the amount of time he is saving here, 10.15 to 9.40 will be how much? Will basically be 35 minutes. Let's assume the standard time that Amal is taking at 8 kmph will be t minutes. So obviously the time taken at 15 kmph will be t minus 35 minutes. Will basically be t minus 35 minutes. So at 8 he is taking t minutes. At 15 he is taking t minus 35 minutes. We know here again time and speed is inversely proportional with each other. So S1 by S2 will be equal to T2 by T1. So in this case 8 upon 15 will be equal to t minus 35 upon t which gives you a sense that 8t will be equal to 15t minus 15 to 35. Following this you will get the value of t as 75 minutes which means the original time at 8 kmph will basically be 75 minutes will basically be 75 minutes and is reaching at 10 15. This time the question is at what speed does he actually has to travel to reach office at 10 a.m. He has to reach at 10 a.m. now. But he is leaving at 9.10. He is leaving at 9.10. Right? He is leaving at 9.10. Now the difference in time will be what? The difference in time. So from 10.15 he has to reach at 10 a.m. From 10.15 he has to reach at 10 a.m. So possibly you will say basically I am taking half to, I have 15 minutes less. I have got 15 minutes less. But here you also are leaving at 9 10. So basically the overall time difference will basically be 10 minus 15 or minus 10 minus 15, which is 25 minutes less. So the second or the final instance, I've got 25 minutes of a time difference. So the question now says if you have 75 minutes, you will move at 8 kmph. If you have only 50 minutes to cover the home distance, what is the speed on which you got to move? This is a beautiful question that you need to solve. Okay, now see the difference in time. By what instance or by what fraction the time is going down? The time is going down by 25 upon 75 minutes. The ratio is 25 minutes less on 75, which is one third. So time is going down by one third. If time is going down by one third, my speed, which is inversely proportional, should go up by 1 by 2. If time is going down by 1 by x, speed will go up by 1 by x minus 1. That's the relation that we are figuring out. So 1 by 2 more, 1 by 2 is 50 percentage, half of 50 percent, half of 8, which is 4 more. The final answer will be 8 plus 4, which is 12 kmph. If I have to cover the whole distance in 50 minutes now, then the speed which, which I have to move on will basically be 12 km per hour. That's the final answer for this question. All of you, I believe, have understood and comprehended. Let's have a look at the next question. The question says, if A, B and C are positive integers such that A into B is 432, B into C is 96 and C is given to you as less than 9, then find the smallest possible value of A plus B plus C, the sum of all. Obviously, you'll get the range of values of what A can take, B can take, C can take. There's a lot of permutation combination which could be involved in this question to find the minimum value. But one hint which I can give you is since a product has been involved, so you need to keep the values of A, B, B, C, to be very very close to each other as much close as possible okay so let's start with b into c so b into c has been given to you as 96 and at the same time c is given to you as a value which is less than 9 now what combinations could be available to make the product of b into c to be equal to 96 one way to get 96 is 12 into 8 is 96 second way is 16 into 6 is 96 third way possibly will become 24 into 4 will be equal to 96 Okay, again as assumed, the values have to be very close to each other to make sure the minimum sum to be explored. Similarly, if you have A into B, A into B has been given to you as 432. In this case, how do you get 432? 1 base 12 into 36 will become 432. 
second wave will be 16 into 27 will become 432 next wave will be 24 into 30, 18 will again become 432 okay these are the probable values of a b and b c that we can take okay now b value is 16 12 and 24 respectively from here so you have to assume b is 12 16 and 24 and a is basically 36 27 and 18 that we can assume so one possible solution of finding the minimum sum of a b and c will become uh, a to be equal to 36 b to be equal to 12 and c to be equal to 8 if you add 36 12 and 8 the final answer will come out to be as 58 let's take the next cases the next case will become 27 16 and 6 over here my sum is coming out to be as 49 third case which is possible is 18 24 and 6 and basically uh, the value of C is coming out to be a 6, yes. So the last sum possible will be 18 plus 24 plus 6, which is coming out to be as 46. So where did you find the minimum sum coming up? The minimum sum is coming out to be in the last expression, which is A to be 18, B to be 24, and C to be equivalent to 6, and the sum is coming out to be 46. So my minimum sum of A plus B plus C has been explored as 46. Just see if you have any other option coming up. Yes, there's an option 46 coming up. There's no other option rather which is less than 46 so you possibly mark 46 to be the least value possible for this sum well let's have a look at the next question i believe all of you are able to see the screen the question says if y is a negative number if y is a negative number such that 2 raised to y square log to the base 3 phi is equal to 5 raised to log to the base 2 3 then the question is find a value of 5 it's been given to you the hint is y is a negative number the hint is y is a negative number so on the first stage only let's take log on both the sides if you take log on both the sides it's going to become y square log 5 to the base 3 log 2 will become equivalent to log, the exponent will come down so this is log 3 to the base 2 log 5 log 5 okay now the base of this log has not been given to me so let me assume standard let's assume the base of 3 on both the sides the base of 3 to be equal to both the sides if i do that possibly log 5 to the base 3 log 5 to the base 3 will get cancelled out and it's going to become y square log to the base 3 to be equal to log 3 to the base 2 in this case i can get the value of y square now y square will become log 3 to the base 2 divided by this log will come on the side this is log 2 to the base 3 obviously if you change if you take the reciprocal it's going to the 1 upon log 2 to the base 3 will become log 3 to the base 2 so finally i can also decipher that y square will only become log of 3 to the base 2 the whole square now the obviously if you take the roots on both the sides you need to consider that y is a negative one so very easily you'll find that y is equal to minus of log 3 to the base 2. Log 3 to the base 2. Very easily you will understand that the value of y is nothing but log 2, log to the base 2, 1 by 3. Only this will get the value of negative as the exponent will become 3 raised to minus 1. Clear? And that's the value of y that we have figured out. Looking at the option, you will understand the answer is option number A, which is log to the base 2. 1 by 3 is the final answer for this question. Easy question, not a difficult question. I hope all of you have understood and solved the question well also. Let's take the next question on geometry. Read the question well. The question says, on a rectangular metal sheet of area 135. So the overall rectangle, whatever you see in this picture, will be 135 square unit inches. A circle is painted such that the circle touches the opposite two sides, which you can see. If the area of the sheet left unpainted, which is in the rectangle outside the circle is two third of the painted area which means the circle is taking three fifth of the overall area the painted circle is three fifth of the, of the overall area of the rectangle the unpainted will become two fifth <laughs> then the perimeter of the old rectangle will be what the perimeter of rectangle will be two times length plus plus breadth. okay uh let's understand the circle as having a radius of r and r so this side will become two r right which is this let's assume this is my length okay my breadth okay so let's understand that 135 square unit is my area right 
So adding to B has been given to us 135. So my breadth will become how much? 135 by L. But my L itself is 2R. Will be 2R. So this side, which is my breadth, will become 135 upon 2R. My length is becoming 2R. And my breadth is becoming everything in terms of R we can figure out. It's 135 upon 135 upon 2R. Okay. Now the circle where the area is basically pi r square of the circle is the painted area is three fifth of the uh, three fifth of the overall area of the rectangle, which is basically three fifth of how much? One thirty five. Three fifth of one thirty five. Right. Now using this, we have to find out the value of r. If you solve this, the value of r will come upon as nine upon root of pi. The value of r will come out as nine upon root of pi. Now, if the value of r is 9 upon root of pi, then the length is 2 times this. So, 9 times 9 into 2 will become 18 upon root of pi, which is basically my length of this rectangle. Which is basically length of this rectangle. And my breadth will become how much? My breadth certainly will become 135 upon 2 times 9 upon root of pi. So, this will go 9, 15 times 135. This will become 15 root pi upon 2. Now this is my breadth and this is my length. I repeat, my breadth has come out to be as 15 root pi upon 2 and my length is 2 times r which is 18 upon root of 5. The question is what? The question is find the perimeter of the rectangle. The perimeter of the rectangle is 2 times a plus b which is 2 times l is 18 upon root pi plus 15 root pi upon 2. If you solve this, you will get the final answer as 3 root pi as taken out common. This is 5 times 12 upon 5 plus 12 upon root of pi. If you see the options, there is only one option which is common. Option number A will be exactly the answer that we are looking at which is 3 root pi 5 plus 12 upon root pi. Easy question. The only thing that you need to understand everything, the perimeter needs to be considered in the value of R. R is simple. Uh, R is the radius of the circle, which is the painted circle inside. So 2 times R will become the length. So 2 times 9 will become 18 upon root pi is the length of the uh, rectangle. My breadth is 135 upon 2 R, which is 135 upon 2 into 9 upon root pi. Solving this, you will understand everything can be taken out in terms of R. Clear? If you solve this, obviously, R you have found out as 9 upon root pi. If you substitute, you find out the overall perimeter of the rectangle. And by the way, anything you'll be able to find out if you have everything in terms of R because the value of R is known as 9 upon root pi. Let's have a look at the next question. The question says in a group of people, 28 percentage of members are young while the others are old. 65 percentage of members are late right and 25 percentage of late right are young. The percentage of old people who are among the illiterates is nearest equal to what? Okay. Let's assume overall 100 people are there in the society. Okay. You have got some people as young and some people as old. Young number of people is, will become 28. So the old will become 72. Now let's consider literate versus illiterate. Now literate members are 65. So illiterate will become how much? The illiterate will become 35. Now the question starts from here. 25 percentage of late rate are young. 25 percentage will become one fourth. One fourth of 65 will be nearest to 16. 16 of them are young and late rate both. Or will be young and late rate both. Out of 65, 16 are young late rate. So old late rate will be how much? Will be 65 minus 16, which will be equal to 49. 49 of 72 is coming from here, which means the left over, which is 72 minus 49, which will become 23, will certainly be old illiterate. Will certainly be old illiterate. So, percentage of old people in illiterate will be how much? Out of 35, 23 of them are illiterate. So, the nearest value will become 23 upon 35, which will be closest to 66 percentage. And that's our answer. Answer should be option number C, which is 66 percentage for this question. Let's take the next question. Very easy question. The question says, an alloy is prepared by mixing metals A, B and C in the proportion of 3 to 4 to 7 by volume. 
the weights of the same volume which is one liter two liter whatever the liters may be of the same volume of a b and c is in the ratio 5 is to 2 is to 6. the question is in 130 kg of alloy of alloy in kg uh, what is the weight of metal c okay let's see the volume in which they have been mixed the volume in which they have been mixed is 3 is to 4 is to 7 so 3 volume of first of a Four volumes of B and seven volumes of C have been mixed. Now the weight of each of the volume is in the ratio of five is to two is to six, which is five kg, two kg, and six kg for respective volumes. So one one volume will be in the ratio of five to two to six. So my overall weight after mixing these volumes will become in the ratio of three to five fifteen is to eight is to forty two is to forty two. So let's assume this is my fifteen kg. 8 kg and 42 kg. If you add all of them, my overall alloy will be of 65 kg. In 65 kg, the proportion of weight of C is 42. In the new alloy, which is of 130 kg, what is the weight of C has been asked? This is 2 times. So even this will go 2 times. 2 times 42 will become simply 84 kg. Simple answer, sweet answer. Option number A will be my answer for this question. Let's have the next question. Very beautiful question. The question says, A gentleman decided to treat few of the children in the following manner. He gives half of this total stock of toppies and one extra to the first child. Whatever he has got X, he'll divide X by 2. Plus 1, he'll give it to. Plus 1, he will give it to the first child. So what is left for the second child? It's X by 2 minus 1. Left for the second child will be X by 2 minus 1. He'll give it to the second child. Okay. The second child will also get half of the remaining plus 1 half of the remaining plus one and he continues doing it the same way the, and he finally exhausts all the chocolates after the fifth children after taking care of fifth children okay now the question is how many toffees were there the question is how many toffees were there in the beginning okay let's start with the fifth child now what is happening in the fifth child after the fifth child eating some of the chocolates after the fifth child eating some of the chocolates which is x by 2 plus 1 is exhausting all the chocolates total number of chocolates will be exhausted i need to find out how many chocolates were present to the fifth child now you need to get zero in the end after eating half of the remaining plus one you should get zero in the end this will only come up when the fifth child is left with two chocolates because half of two will be one plus one will become two and if you're eating two of two you're left with zero chocolates i hope this is clear only if you have two chocolates, two by two will become one, plus one will become two chocolates, and totally you are exhausting two chocolates, so it will become zero. Which gives me a hint, I repeat, which also gives me a hint that the fifth child was left with two chocolates. The fifth child was left with two chocolates. Left with two chocolates means the left over of the fourth child. The fourth guy child is eating something and he's leaving two chocolates. How much is the fourth child eating? He is eating half of the given left over of the third plus one okay so if i see if i have to find the total number of chocolates present to the fourth child it will basically be x by two minus one will be equal to two chocolates he's eating one of it he's eating one of it so he's leaving two chocolates okay so if you solve this you will get x to be as six chocolates which means the fourth child was presented with six chocolates we'll go reverse Let's see the third child. The third child was again eating half of what was present plus one. So left over will be x by two minus one, which is six chocolates given to the fourth child. So the present number of chocolates to the third child will be x will be equal to 14 chocolates. Here came 14 chocolates. Going above the second child. The second child is also eating half of what is present plus one. Left will be half of what he has eaten minus one will be 14. If you solve this, x will come out to be as 30, uh, will come out to be as 30 chocolates. So the second child is eating how many chocolates? The second child is basically eating 30 chocolates. Now comes the first child. Now the first child will also do the similar fashion. It is x by two minus one will be equal to 30, which means 30 chocolates was given to the second child after eating whatever first eight first eight half plus one so the left will be half minus one 
half minus one. If you solve this, x will become 62, which means the total number of chocolates present initially would have been 62 chocolates, and that's my answer. How many toffees are present? 62 toffees are present in the beginning. That's our primary answer that we are looking at to find. Let's look at the next question. The question says a solution of 40 liters has dye and water in the proportion of 2 to 3. Water is added to the solution to change the proportion to 2 to 5. From 2 to 3, it is now becoming 2 to 5. One fourth of the diluted solution has been taken out. And now in this diluted solution, how many liters of dye must be added to make sure that the solution proportion goes back to 2 to 3? Good question. And very easy rather. So let's say the total volume is 40. You have got, you have got dye in water in the ratio of 2 to 3. Okay. So 2 by 5 of 8 will become 16. Though the 16 of dye and water will become how much? Water will become 24. This is the original, initial proportion of dye to water. Now the question says, water has been added to make the ratio of as 2 to 5. Water has been added to make it as 2 to 5. So water originally was 3x, which was 24 liters. So 5x will become how much? 5x will simply become 40 liters. If even if you cross multiply, you will get the same answer, will become 40 liters, which means the new proportion of dye to water, which is 2 is to 5, is now 16 is to 40. Now they are saying one fourth has been taken out. One fourth is being, uh, if one fourth of the diluted solution is being taken out, so left is 3 fourth. One fourth of 16 will become fourth, one fourth of 40 will become 10. So minus 4 minus 10 will become 12 is to 30. This is the new proportion which I have found, which I have found, which is 12 is to 30. Now the question says, how much dye has to be added? Here dye is getting added. Water is zero because water is original 30. So make the final proportion go back to 2 is to 3. Okay. Now here, now 30 is 30. So what dye should become 20 to make it the final ratio look like 2 is to 3. So 12 has to be added by what to make it 20? It's a simple question. The value of x has to be 8, which means 8 liters of dye has to be added to make the final proportion go back to 2 to 3. It's the simple question. You got the answer, right? And twice.